Thank you so much for the opportunity, Mr. Stewart. I, I'm really Mr. honored. Mr. Stewart, <laughs> wow. Aren't we having a different program today? Ah, Mr. Stewart. I heard Stewart. that you have a show here that is Thank you, very, Mr. Hosseini. <laughs> it's very similar to my show. And I heard that uh, people are calling you the American Combs. version of Combs Hosseini. Is that, is, I, I brought, that a lot. I brought a couple of uh, Rose Waters to investigate this now. Yes, I so think is that's that... wise to interrogate me <laughs> based on that. Is that true? Uh, you know, I, first, I remember I first saw your show when I was just a kid <laughs> um, growing up in Tehran. And uh, I would see you. How on. was that? How was that experience growing up in Tehran? Uh, you know, the bagels were a little dry. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm glad that you're, you're doing the show and you're doing well. And, and Thank this you is, so much. You basically program. sold my dream. You have my show. You made a movie about Iran, which I wanted to do. You, you know, and you still can. <laughs> I, think, I think they can, from what I understand, I have not exhausted the topic. No, not yet? No, I think you can jump in on that. Can you explain to our audience, mm. what, what, ex what is it exactly you do here? Oh, that's a great question. Our show is about taking in the events of the day that affect us emotionally and using the tools of, of humor, satire, of exaggeration, of uh, uh, hyperbole, of juxtaposition, of, of puns. And, and those are the tools we use to comment on the events of the day. It, it really is nothing more than that. What do you think people should expect from a satire show? News, entertainment, analysis, point of view, a different... You have it backwards. What do you expect? What do you want? I want Don't I listen want to, to them. Oh, okay. Listen to you. I'm not listening to anybody anymore. That's you got to get off. You got to get off the comment <laughs> section. That's going to kill you. You got to listen to you. But I, I, the reactions that I get from people, I can't ignore. There are some reactions you can't. Well, ignore. if it's is, it, is any of it constructive? Do you find any of it? What What do they say? Basically, what they're saying. Whatever I do, they say do something else. <laughs> That's <laughs> whatever I do. They're like, why are you doing this? Do this. That's that's the problem. Well, well a, maybe when they get their show, but you don't show, have that could, problem, though. Of course we do. You do? Of course. You you, th we live in a world of opinion. Okay, let's change the topic. And, and no, how about this? Yeah. Make that a part of your show. Do your sh Do the joke you want to do, and then do three jokes. And here's the three jokes that this type of person, this type of person, and this type of person would rather have me do. That's a great idea. Make it that way. Make that a part of your. Make your process a part of your show that conflict that you feel inside, make that a part of your show. Yeah. That's a show. That's a show. That's a good show, actually. That's a good let's show. Let's do that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, let's, when, Wait, when, I just when, said that. when Colbert is gone, would you replace me and I can do that show for you? You really could do that show. <laughs> I think that would be nice. Conflicted show. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Rosewater. Uh, I know you, you explained this a million times. Yes. But um, I have a different audience that you need to explain this to right now. Yes. What is it all about? The story of Rosewater? Yeah. It was, do they know Maziar? Do they know Maziar Bahari? Our audience know Maziar very well. Okay, so they know Maziar very well. They know uh, Maziar went to cover the 2009 elections. He was arrested uh, after the protests, yeah. uh, after he had filmed some things that turned very violent. Uh, they held him in solitary confinement for 118 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the story of how that all developed and hopefully presenting a, at least for an American audience, a more nuanced view of Iran than they're accustomed to. To seeing, I think uh, if your audience uh, and, and Iranians, I'm sure would would the film would be simplistic and kind of reductive. It certainly doesn't have the nuance of somebody if the director had been uh, Iranian or really knew the culture in a way. Um, but hopefully, uh, the story still resonates. What was your uh, perception of Iranians before and after the movie? Well, I think you know. You have to look at it within the context of the American perception of the world. Mm -hmm. We don't have particularly, even within, uh, you know, the, the nemesis relationship between Iran and the United States, we don't have those particularly strong feelings. We have a reductive. Now, some in the United States would say about Iran, uh, uh, they're in the axis of evil. My perception of that is that's a ridiculous thing to say about a country. Mm -hmm. Now, Iran might also then, some people there might say, death to America, they're the great Satan. That is as ridiculous and as reductive. So my sense of Iran has always been that we have created a two-dimensional uh, vision of it that in no way matches 
the reality on the ground in the way that some there have created a two-dimensional image of us and that we are talking past each other. But as far as the, the nuance of the culture itself, only in the last few years as I've been introduced to it have I gotten a sense for it. Uh, what was your biggest challenge doing this movie? I had some actors, uh, kid named Combies. Um, <laughs> oh my who, God, I'm not even in the movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, you kept saying, don't look directly <laughs> into the camera. It's not TV, it's film. <laughs> Sorry, okay, John. That's, John. That's, that's my follow-up question, what's my, actually. What's my character? <laughs> that's my follow-up question. How did you cast my ghost in the movie? Because my name is in the credit. Yes. But I'm not in it. How did you... You are in how it. How did you bust you just that... Don't, you, are, you are in it. <laughs> you just don't say anything. We thought it was best. Yeah. As we looked through, we thought, you look great. I thought, very handsome. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you we so much. We should maybe take his lines away. <laughs> Um, I, I really enjoyed being, uh, we being had a on ball. set. Yeah, you yeah, know, that was set, always, and that. I thank you for your being uh, gracious about it. You know, I when, liked the movie, though. I've cried four times oh, watching it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Was it, did you cry in the scenes that you knew should have been in there that were gone? No, no. Or, when did you, or for the story? <laughs> no, no, actually, I cried the scene that people, were people tweeting, tweeting out yeah, yeah, the yeah. things. You know, I felt like the Green, green Movement, you know, was All our right. cry for... Uh, democracy, the justice, you know, sure. justice that went away. So those those moments were like, oh my God, yeah, painful. What if? What yeah, if? yeah, 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 yeah. But it's uh, uh, you know, understanding. You know, when I came back and I looked at the rough cut, and it was three and a half hours long, and and all those things. But he, he Cumbies was actually quite good in it. But it was a storyline so that much. we couldn't. But it was yeah. you, you were actually quite good, and we did have right. a nice time. And, and you hit them really hard uh, by by your by your movie. Do, any any communication? Any formal inquiries from them? from them coming no i think if the movie invitation? had done a little better maybe they would have called i think at this point they're they're probably no. more like yeah art house huh all right we'll live with that but i think it's an important movie well, it's thank a very you. important uh, movie they they've put um, you know they've done some stories on it the truth is and you see it in all regimes in all governments governments are thin skinned and are not very agile in terms yeah. of reflecting on their known in, uh, 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 on their imperfections. I mean, look, look what's going on in this CIA report that's yeah, going yeah. out in, in this country. I, I feel, I, you know, I'll call Maziar up and be like, "That's very mm, ironic, right? Why that's didn't they do any of that <laughs> stuff to you? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know about this." Uh, uh, Maybe they didn't do it to Maziar, they, but they've they they done, done it, it to, to other to people. A lot of yeah. people. Yeah. What Even you begin to realize is these, the apparatus of these things, are ingrained when when regimes are fearful. You know, there's no other reason to, uh, to conduct yourselves at that level unless there is some real gripping fear of, of a, a lack of solid foundation of, of your regime. It's the same thing like with Bassem in yeah. Egypt. You know, it, if our president, if the supreme leader, if, if the head of Egypt who control these massive armies with massive weapons can't be made fun of, you know, what does that say about their security? And that's, and that's where it's important to do what you do. Uh, it's, it's, it's great that you brought the CIA abuse report in Iran. Uh, there are reports like this and, and all the, the people all the time. And there is no discussion or the, we have to discuss this, that outside of Iran. Right. And people are uh, having a hard time uh, uh, having access to this kind of information. Right. But here. Well, I we think that's the point know, too, is that as, as access gets democratized, as the technology gets democratized, those conversations, you know, the ultimate example of mm -hmm. that is sort of North Korea who control the flow of information. I mean, that is a real cone of silence around that country. And even if you yeah. were to look at from a satellite map at night, you look at the earth and there's a little spot yeah. that's just dark. Yeah. And it's North Korea. They're, they're, you know, and then there are various shades of that. Can you stick around? Can we have a couple more questions? Do we have time? Yeah, no, have a time? couple more questions. Um, and then I'd like to perform a number. So okay, I'm great. <laughs> great. We have, a music, we, have a, we have some instruments in the, in the back. <laughs> Like an angel, okay. <laughs> like an angel. I like your voice, actually. Really? I heard that. That's I heard that. I heard that your dream was to become a musician. I would love that? to become. If I, you know, what I wish I had, where where, where that is concerned, talent. Mm -hmm. I would like to have talent in that. 
where but you you're can play music. But you're talented in many other ways. So that's, I, I that, can, that's the only thing you don't cook. have, and you're begging for it. That's I would like to have. Uh, if I had musical talent, you can trust me. I wouldn't sit around here making jokes about things. No. I'd be out there. Wow. So you're conflicted too, John. Very conflicted. Is that <laughs> Very conflicted. So I, th I think you know a lot about Iran now it's because you research about it. You, you know, you devoted uh, some time of your life mm -hmm. uh, thinking about it and all that. Uh, nowadays, um, American officials, they go and sit in front of Iranians and trying to negotiate to, uh, in my point of view, bringing peace mm -hmm. uh, to the, bringing solution. Yeah. To the whole thing. This is what you're, uh, you stand for all the time, peace and, uh, and, and uh, do you have any suggestions for negotiation, negotiators that they go, yeah. Americans yeah. who go and sit in front of Iranians, First do you have all, any? You can never go wrong with a good pheasant June. <laughs> That's <laughs> always a, a good icebreaker. Yeah. It's delicious. People, I think, negotiate better on a full stomach. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think the difficulty in peace and solutions is you have to wonder who benefits. Yeah. I think there's a great benefit that Iran, the leaders of Iran, and, and maybe the leaders of America, reap from the conflict. A stability. Yeah. Countries, man, it's always good when your people have an enemy. Boy, that, that, that helps keep you in power. Yeah. When the people have an enemy and you can rail them. So... <clears throat> What I believe is, is most necessary for peace is not necessary solutions, because the solutions are probably not as complicated as we might imagine. It's courage. And owning the, the instability of the future through that type of negotiation. There are very few leaders that have the type of courage to uh, change the uh, Facebook status yeah. of the countries they deal with from enemy to friend. Yeah. And, and and then have to own whatever consequence of that there is. John, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Whenever you know what? people I didn't I'm putting him back in the movie. I had no idea <laughs> that thank I was so dealing much. with a man of I this wish... talent. You're wish, back in the movie. Uh, thank you so much. So now, we're gonna be, have a director cut in there? Uh, the I DVD? do I actually do have a three and a half hour cut and I can assure you it's a giant piece of I'm gonna be uh, eating cucumbers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Good man. Good man. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. All right.